All right, so let's talk about osmolality and osmolarity. Okay. Uh, putting the os in front of these words, molality and molarity, simply means you are now interested in just the total moles of solute particles in your solution. Okay. Uh, this has to do with this being uh, uh, this type of information being something you can obtain from measurement of what's known as osmotic pressure, which we'll talk about later. But anyway, um, osmolality would just be the total moles of solute particles per kilogram of solvent. You recall molality is mole solute per kilogram of solvent. So if you just want to count the particles separately, in other words, if you have sodium chloride, okay, you know in water it's going to break up into sodium and chloride ions, right? So uh, when, you count, when you're de dealing with osmolality, you want the moles of the particles. So you're going to count the sodium separately from the chloride. Okay, you're going to add them all up, and that will give you your osmolality. Similarly, osmolarity will be total moles of solute particles per liter of solution. Now, with respect to any one particular solute or compound that you put in your mixture, Okay, the osmolality or osmolarity is just equal to the whatever the molality is of that solute multiplied by a factor called I, and that I we call that the Van Hoff factor. So, for example, in dilute solutions of sodium chloride, for example, what, what do you think I would be? If I have a 0.1 molar sodium molar sodium chloride, okay. Uh -huh. If I have a 0.1 molar sodium chloride, okay, what would be the concentration of sodium? 0.1. What would be the concentration of chlorine? 0.1. So what's the total concentration of particles? 0.2. So what would be I for sodium chloride? What would I multiply 0.1 by in order to get 0.2? Two. So the Van Hoff factor is essentially uh, gives you an indication of the extent to which your uh, sol your solute ionizes in water. What if you have something like HF, which only partially ionizes? It's not going to be one, right? The I is not going to be equal to one, but I is not going to be equal to two either because it's not going to be completely ionized. The value of I that you get would be your Van Hoff factor would be a number between one and two. So if you have an I that's between one and two in this case, it will give you an indication of to what extent that HF ionized in one. Okay. So just a quick check. The molality of sodium chloride in a solution that's 0.5 moles per kilogram. So this is molality, 0.5 for sodium chloride. What is the osmolality of the solution? Assume your sodium chloride is completely dissociated under these conditions. Is it A, 0.5, B, 1, or is it C, So the correct answer is one. Very good. Why one? Because each sodium chloride will give you, each mole of sodium chloride will give you two moles of solute particles. So the Van Hoff factor here is two. So osmolality, we say, is two times the molality in this particular case. Your I is equal to two. Okay. What is the molar osmolarity of a solution that's 0.2 molar with respect to sodium sulfate and it's 0.5 molar with respect to glucose? You have a mixture, it's got sodium sulfate in it. So if you had a liter of it, it's going to have 0.2 moles of sodium sulfate and 0.5 moles of glucose. Now, what do you know about glucose? Molecular compound, it doesn't dissociate. If sodium sulfate, how many particles can you get from sodium sulfate? 
What's the Van Hal factor for sodium sulfate? It's going to give you two sodiums and one sulfate. So the Van Hal factor for your sodium sulfate is three. Okay, so what would be your osmolarity for this mixture? Is it 0 0.7, 1 0.1, 0 0.9, or 1.7? Give me a little time to think about it. What would it be? Okay, the answers. One point one, very good. Okay, so you know your stuff. So 3 times 0.2, right, for your sodium sulfate, and plus 1 times 0.5, so that gives you 1.1. 1 .1.